So now that we have a good working knowledge of what it means to have a membrane potential and really what a membrane potential is, we're going to now put it into context. And that context will be specifically to look at the normal state that the membrane potential has or is within a neuron within the nervous system. So to look at this normal state, we'll entitle this next flowchart membrane potential 2. But here, we're actually going to be looking at a different figure, and this figure will be figure 48.6. And what we're trying to highlight here is the norm, what is the usual membrane potential within the nervous system. And that norm, that usual within the nervous system, is known as the resting potential. The resting potential, which we'll just abbreviate from this point forward as RP, is going to be exactly what we basically stated prior, when we stated that the inside of the cell is more negative compared to, always compared to, the outside of the cell. Why is that? Well, that's because the inside of the cell is maintaining what is known as a resting potential. And that resting potential can be seen as the following. It is going to be the idea that the cell membrane of the axon we're focusing on the cell membrane of a specific structure known as the axon. Remember, the axon is a part of the neuron. And that's going to be the axon at rest. The axon is not conducting any messages. It's not receiving or sending, I should say, many messages. It's just at rest. It's essentially, when it's at rest, it's not excited. That's the correct term to use here when we're talking about a nervous or neural structure. And that non-excited state, that rest state, is going to create a resting potential of what is known as negative 70 M capital V for millivolts. Remember how we said voltage is a unit to measure membrane potential? The membrane potential, the resting potential, which is a membrane potential, of a non-excited at rest axon which is a part of a neuron, is negative 70 millivolts. Okay, It's really between uh, anywhere from 60 to 80, but a number to absolutely remember is that the norm of an axon, of a neuron, is to be at a resting state of negative 70 millivolts. Why is it negative? Now, why is it not positive? Well, that's because the inside is more negative than the outside. Whenever we're talking about a potential, a membrane potential, we are referring to the outside, remember our reference electrode, and then that's in comparison to the inside. The inside will always be very, very negative. Why is that? Why is this going to be negative 70 millivolts? Why is that the norm? Why isn't it zero? That's going to be highlighted by understanding what resting potential is and how it becomes the normal state. And in order to understand that, what we're going to be looking at is the idea of maintaining maintaining that weird sort of idea that resting potential is always at negative 70 millivolts. How do you maintain that? There are two main mechanisms to go over in the maintenance of resting potential within neurons. The first one that we'll go over is known as the sodium-potassium pump. Sodium-potassium pump pump is a structure that helps maintain resting potential at negative 70 millivolts. How does it do this? Well, first of all, in terms of location, the sodium potassium pump and structure, let's say, is a membrane protein. It is found on the membrane of the axon, and it's actually found on the entire cell, I should say, the membrane protein um, that's going to be on the cell uh, along the plasma membrane, membrane protein on, I should say, cell of, uh, on cell along the plasma membrane of all three structures that we've talked about. The cell body will contain membrane protein, a sodium potassium pump. Dendrites will have sodium potassium pumps attached to its plasma membrane, and also axons. Definitely axons will have sodium potassium pumps along all along the axon structure. Basically, what we're stating is that the entire neuron has sodium potassium pumps on it. And sodium potassium pumps do exactly what their name implies. They pump sodium and potassium. 
but specifically, um, this is going to be a one pump cycle. One pump is going to be the movement, it was going to cause the movement of sodium potassium in a very specific way. And it's an interesting to note how this happens. The cycle goes as follows. Three sodium ions, and if you know, sodium ions are positively charged. Keep that in mind. Three Na plus ions move out. They move out of the cell. Okay? They go latch on to this membrane protein. They're going to leave the cell. Three of them, three positive charges, therefore. And then the potassium side is the following. As they leave, two potassium ions will move in. These guys move in. Notice how we have a difference, okay? This is actually a process that is going against the concentration gradient. This process has to occur via active transport, therefore, because, let's just reiterate this, it's active, it involves ATP, because this process is against, it's absolutely against a concentration gradient, because you're not doing a fair and even exchange. You're forcing three sodium ions out, and you're forcing two potassium ions in. And that exchange is certainly against the concentration gradient. And we know that in biology, if you break this law of the concentration gradient, you must utilize active transport. Active meaning this process absolutely needs ATP. Now, what I want you to notice is that three positive things are going out and only two are coming back in. That's going to lead you to a net sort of loss. It's going to be, think of it like this, you're going to have plus three leave, so that turns into minus three, right? And you're only going to get plus two back in. So now, negative three plus two gives you what? That only gives you a final value of negative one. So you're constantly going to be doing this, and you're constantly going to be getting more negative. Is that good or bad? Well, you want to maintain a resting potential that is quite negative, at negative 70 millivolts. So guess what? Doing this process going against the concentration gradient, becoming more and more negative with every single pump of this membrane protein is a good idea because right now you want to maintain a negative state. And you're definitely going to get that if you're letting three go and only bringing two charges, two positive charges in. These are three positive charges leaving and only two coming back in, thus a net sort of loss of negative one. Now, the question is, does this govern at all? Now, this process requires ATP. It goes against the concentration gradient. Those are things you could generally refer to as stuff that the cell will do, yes, the neuron will do definitely a decent amount, but doesn't prefer because it costs energy. And as we know, energy is valuable and it's not good to constantly be using energy. So the sodium potassium pump will be certainly involved in maintaining this negative 70 millivolt resting potential, but there will be something that helps this idea even more. Something that helps maintain a negative state on the inside of the cell more so than this. This is part of the equation. The other side are known as ion channels. Okay, Specific ion channels are going to be involved in maintaining a negative 70 millivolt uh, inside of the cell. Now, ion channels are going to be specifically pores that are in the plasma membrane. So these aren't necessarily proteins anymore. They're just openings, they're just pores that are going to allow ions to diffuse. Keyword diffuse. Allow ions, which are charged molecules, to diffuse. If you remember diffuse, does that require energy or no energy? No energy so long as it is along the concentration gradient. And thus, the diffusion across the plasma membrane will not require energy. This required energy, thus it's not a preferred mechanism, certainly a mechanism, but it can't be sustained for that long. It can happen, but not at a super great rate. Ion channels, on the other hand, are just openings that allow ions in across the plasma membrane or allow ions out. Depends on what we're talking about, depends on the concentration gradient. So as we can see, what we notice about ion channels is that any net movement that term, net movement, means the majority of movement, in other words, of either positive or 
negative charge generates a membrane potential. If we have a net movement of positive charge, we're going to get a positive membrane potential. If we have a net movement of negative charge, we're going to get a negative membrane potential. But again, that movement is either into or out of the cell. How can we figure out what's happening here? Now, think about it like this. These ion channels, I'll tell you that they're positive ion channels. What do you think these positive ion channels have to do? Do they have to let positive things in or let positive things out? We have to maintain negative 70 millivolts. That means we have to get rid of positively charged things. So take, for example, the potassium channels that are spread throughout the axon, throughout the neuron. Potassium channels are structures, they are ion channels that are always open. They are in this constantly open state, and I like to think of them as leaky ion channels. They're always leaking. And what they're leaking is the following. They allow things to diffuse, allow potassium specifically, K+, plus, to diffuse from, now where do you think? We have to make ions, positive ions, leave the cell and go to the outside. We have to get more and more negative. We have to get less positive on the inside of the cell. So we're going to diffuse from the inside of the cell. We're taking a positively charged potassium ion from the inside to the outside, aka it's leaving the cell to maintain that negative resting potential, to maintain negative RP. Now, what's going to be happening is that there's going to be many potassium channels all spread throughout the neuron, more than the um, positive, let's say, more than, the, more than even the sodium channels. There will be some of these, but there will be lots of potassium channels involved in maintaining this. These potassium channels are 100 times more permeable. They allow potassium to go through them. 100 times more than a uh, sodium ion, okay? So though, that, though they're, they're channels, yes, they're just openings, they're just pores, they may allow certain things to come in and out of them, uh, like positive ions, but they allow some things in great more preference, like potassium ions, 100 times more chance of a potassium ion to leave through this channel than, let's say, a sodium ion. Okay? So we're going to constantly be losing this positive potassium, and essentially what we have is the following. This is the buildup of potassium, which is positive. It's the buildup of, I should say, positive charge. Where? Where is positive charge being built up if we're constantly leaving the cell? That means the outside of the cell is constantly being put or into a state of positive charge. Remember our reference electrode on the outside of the cell, positive. Our other electrode is on the inside of the cell, very much negative. So a buildup of positive charge on the outside relative to what? Relative to the inside. The inside is losing positive. The outside is gaining positive because of these leaky positive uh, potassium channels because of this unequal exchange of positive ions, thus causing overall a negative resting potential. Overall, this idea creates a negative RP, negative resting potential, equal to negative 70 millivolts. That is our resting potential. That is why, that is why it's negative. Because... There's a negative inside of the cell, negative cytosol, versus what? It's always in reference to something versus the positive outside. Why is the outside so positive? The outside is positive because it's gaining three, three sodium ions and losing only two potassium ions. And then it's gaining a bunch of these potassium ions back also from these leaky ion channels throughout the neuron. The end all be all is that you end up with a negative membrane potential called the resting potential that all neurons have when they're not excited, when they are at rest. And when we manipulate this, when we specifically change this and purposefully change this negative millivolt, negative 70 millivolt resting potential to something else, we will eventually get an action, something that we want. And that's what we'll look at as we move forward with this idea of membrane potential.